and today I'm doing another paranormal story time. You guys really liked my Ouija board story time and my haunted hotel story time and the live footage from that. So today I thought I'd do another scary one. This is a time that I went to a haunted slaughterhouse and this takes place before the Byron Hotel incident. So I mean technically this was kind of like my first paranormal experience besides the Ouija board but I don't really count that because that happened in the comfort of my home and we were just trying to play a game. It wasn't like I went out seeking for something but it's still kind of the same thing because the Ouija board is not a game. I would not recommend that. If you haven't seen my story time go check it out. I'll link it below. But the haunted slaughterhouse, I had heard rumors about it forever. I've even mentioned in other story times that I had tried to go, like my friend and I snuck out to go there and it just didn't work out. So I always wanted to go since the second I heard about it. I've always been really intrigued by the darker things in life. Like I get a thrill out of that and I like scary movies, I like scary things. And like I said, this is pretty much my first paranormal experience. So I had no real fears of anything happening to me. I just wanted to check it out for myself. So one night, a group of friends and I spontaneously decided to go. It was around 9 or 10 o'clock. It was pitch black outside and we all hopped in my friend's Jeep and drove over there. Halfway down the road when we're like driving over to the destination, which was the slaughterhouse, we realized that she's going to run out of gas. So we were a little bit hesitant, like maybe we should turn back around. We don't want to be stranded there because it was on this deserted road that no one would have found us. So if we called someone for help, I mean, yeah, we would have someone come and help us if we were stranded there. But other than that, like no one would have seen us at all. We probably would have been hit by a drunk driver or something. It was one of those really sketchy roads in the middle of nowhere. There was no neighborhood, nothing around us. But against our better judgment, we kept driving and we got to our destination and it's private property. So technically, I don't know for a fact with this location, the slaughterhouse, but like I said with the Byron Hotel story, if it's private property and someone owns that, they actually, in most cases, have the legal right to shoot you. Like at the Byron Hotel, that was a thing that everyone was scared of was being shot. So we knew that we had to hide her Jeep because if a policeman saw it or something, they might investigate and see that we were down there. So we ended up parking her Jeep like a little ways down the street. It was actually pretty far, but then they ended up moving it closer and just staying in the car because like none of my friends would go with me. We got there and the only person who stuck with me all the way was my friend Nick. A couple of our other friends they tried to go with us, but halfway through they got too scared because we had to walk down this super big trail. It was probably like two miles. So when we left, I was kind of mad. I was like, come on guys, you don't want to go with me. And they're like, no, just hurry back so we can like drive home. It's cold outside. And I was like, okay, whatever. So Nick and I started walking with our friends who halfway through they started crying and they're too scared. They turned back around and my phone stopped working just like in the Byron Hotel story time. It wasn't like it died. It wasn't like I didn't have service. It just literally stopped working and I honestly think that's a paranormal thing because that's happened every single time I've had one of these experiences my phone just like spazzes out and it just like goes blank and I can't use it until I get into like a normal area again and it's not because I didn't have service because there were plenty of bars you could literally see like the cell towers out there like that's the kind of area we were in so I literally thought that my phone broke, but Nick and I continued because we're like, okay, if it broke, it, it broke. We'll fix it later, let's just keep going. We weren't that scared yet. We kept going and there's this one area before you actually reach the slaughterhouse itself, it's called Gravity Hill and there's a lot of rumors why it's called that and sort of what happened there. But I guarantee you something happened there because it didn't feel right with me and I started to say that the second we walked over there and that's when Nick told me the story because I didn't even know about it previous to this. So basically rumor has it a school bus it fell. There's a lot of different versions of the story and like what happened and like why it's haunted. But basically they're saying that a school bus full of kids died there. So if you park your car on Gravity Hill, that part of like the road where it's really hilly, that your car will slowly move in like one direction or the other. And I've heard that people have actually done it and it's legit. We didn't do it because we didn't want to have our car marked for trespassing or whatever. So they just stayed by the car over there where it was safe. But if you look it up on hauntedplaces.org, there's like testimony of it and stuff so anyways we continued past gravity hill but when we were on gravity hill and like pretty much like ever since we went past gravity hill i didn't feel normal i kind of felt like i was in a trance it also could be because it was dark and we were really further out there so there was literally no source of light at all we just had our cell phones and then our cell phones didn't work anymore so at this point we had nothing to rely on at all for light at all so i just kind of felt out of it you know i wasn't tired or anything either but i just felt really groggy and just kind of 
wanted to get there at this point. I knew we were close to our destination. We'd been walking for a really long time. So we kept walking past Gravity Hill and we finally make it to the slaughterhouse itself. And it's really hard to see it because it's pitch black. So I started to walk up to it because I was gonna go there and there's a fence and I saw the fence obviously, but I didn't know it was barbed wire because it was dark. So then Nick's like, no, 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 don't touch it. There's barbed wire, you're gonna get cut. So we were able to find this one part of the fence where it wasn't barbed wired off. It was like, it wasn't a very big space either, but it was just like regular wood. So I basically flipped over it. I didn't do a flip over it, but the only way I was able to get over it without cutting myself on the barbed wire was I like put my hands on it and I like flipped my legs over it to where they didn't touch anything. And then Nick found an area on the other side where he like crawled under it. So at this point, Nick and I are both inside the actual slaughterhouse itself. Well, we're like not inside of it yet, but we're on the actual property. So we're inside of the gate where they enclosed the animals back when it was a real slaughterhouse because obviously it had been abandoned for years at this point. That's why it's supposedly haunted. No one uses it. And the second we walked in there, like I said, Nick came in a different entrance than I did. He went under the fence. I went over it. I walked straight into the slaughterhouse, like full speed, no hesitation, didn't think about it, which is so unlike me. Not because I wasn't scared, because I really wasn't scared, but just because I'm not the type to leave the group to just like go out by myself. I would want my friends to come with me, especially because Nick was the only other person with me at that point, but I just went ahead of him without even thinking about it, no hesitation, and he called after me. He was like, Allie, kind of like, wait up, what are you doing? But I didn't look back at all. I just walked straight into the slaughterhouse. I went through these like little wooden doors that kind of like swung. So I walked into there pitch black because at least outside when it was pitch black, there was still the moonlight, but inside there was nothing. So I had no idea what was in there if there was a homeless person in there because a lot of the time tweakers would go back there and like do drugs and stuff because no one would ever find you or if there was rats or bats or like any sort of like animals like that living there. I have no idea, it was pitch black. That was probably really disgusting and just like a stupid thing to do in the first place. But I walked straight in there and the second I walked in and I walked in like full speed, like really, really fast. I was like determined to get in there. I heard a bunch of noise. I couldn't even describe to you the noise that I heard. If I tried to, it would probably sound like an animation from a movie, but it wasn't like that. It was nothing like that. It was so loud and so serious that I just knew to get out. It was an overwhelming feeling in my body. I ran out so quick. I don't know what happened in there. I don't know how long I was in there for. Nick said that I was in there for like a minute or two. I felt like it was for a second because the second I walked in there, I couldn't tell you anything that happened. Maybe that's because it was pitch black. Maybe that's because I was like paralyzed in fear. I don't know. To my knowledge, nothing really happened in there, but when I walked out, I had a bloody leg. My entire right calf was bloody, and I'll talk about the cut in a minute, or the scrape, or what was causing the blood. So I ran out, and my first instinct wasn't to hop the fence, it was to find Nick. I was pretty out of it, like I didn't really know what was going on at this point, I just knew that I wanted to leave more than anything, but I wanted help hopping the fence because it was like lower on the inside, if that makes sense, so he actually had to boost me over it. But he was the one who pointed out my bloody leg, because I didn't even notice that first, I didn't even feel it at first. I didn't even feel the pain until we got back into the car and then my phone started working because I thought my phone was broken at this point too. So we left, he boosted me back up over the fence and we walked super quickly back to the car. And we didn't run because there would have been no point in running that would be like two miles of running in the dark. We could have tripped. So it was a lot smarter for us to just walk. We didn't have a flashlight or anything. So we walked back. We made it back all the way to our friend's Jeep. We got there and all my friends were like, what happened to your leg? And I couldn't tell them. I felt really stupid, but I wasn't really thinking about it still. I wasn't in any sort of pain until I got into the car and then my phone started working. So we get in the car and then they were handing me Kleenexes to try to like blot my leg with. It wasn't a ton of blood, but you know how when you get like some type of cut or any Anything, it'll just spread if it's like in the right place that's what happened to me and then it was kind of like drying up so it just looked really bad but I couldn't explain why I had that if, if someone had took a knife to my leg if I, I couldn't explain it so we get back to my friend's house and like I said at this point my phone started working so I was like okay that must have been related to what we just experienced back there and Nick was shook and just a side note real quick he's in the army and he's seen a lot of things. I talked to him about a week ago. I told him I was going to tell the story. And he says, to this day even, that this was one of the scariest things he's ever experienced. And he didn't even go in the slaughterhouse. He just saw me go in and out of there. And he just like felt what he felt like around in the atmosphere. So it was pretty legit. We go back to my friend's house and actually clean up my leg like with a bandaid and everything because we just had ratchet Kleenex. We were able to make it back in her car, by the way. Thankfully, we didn't run out of gas. But I forgot to mention, we were stuck there for like 10 minutes because her car wouldn't start because 
they didn't have the car running that whole time because we were probably down there for like an hour when you include the walking time and everything so the car didn't start for like 10 minutes we almost had to call her brother to come get us but then finally it ended up starting so and this is why I don't think my leg was cut on the barbed wire. When we went to go bandage up my leg, we washed it off and everything so we could like clearly see what was going on. And it wasn't a type of cut you would get from barbed wire. I don't know if you guys have ever been cut on barbed wire before or you have any idea what that looks like. I guess you would have had to have seen my leg to understand, like to understand the type of blood and like cut I had. But it was just so unexplainable we couldn't identify how that happened at all but like I said Nick said that I was in there for a couple minutes I only remember being in there for like a split second so I hope you guys enjoyed this paranormal story if you guys want more be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel also you can follow seven days of slay which is my collab channel I post on there every single Friday we have weekly themes it's pretty lit but yeah, this story doesn't have a conclusion other than I never went back. Don't go there. I would not recommend it. If you guys have ever been there, because surprisingly enough, in my other story times, like my haunted ones, a lot of you have actually commented or messaged me saying that you've been there or that you wanted to go there because you lived in the area. Don't go to this one. This one, honestly, I feel like is almost worse than the Byron Hotel just because I went to the Byron Hotel a lot. And I only had that one extreme paranormal experience where I felt like I was in danger. The other times it was fine, which I mean, I wouldn't chance that I wouldn't go there either. But with this experience, the one time I went there, I came back with a bloody leg. So thank you guys for watching again. And be sure to follow my social media if you want to get to know me outside of YouTube. Before I forget, I want to announce my Gator of October. It goes out to Isabella, and I also have a bonus Gator I'm gonna announce. It's Alligator's Memes, because I don't even know their real name yet. I need to message them, and then I'm gonna link both Isabella and Alligator's Memes, their social media below, because they're both amazing supporters, but the meme page has me dying. And then Isabella is so freaking sweet. I actually told her that she was Gator of the Month, like, probably a month ago, a couple weeks ago at least. I know I've been really bad about doing this for a while now and it originally started out as Gator of the Week. But anyways, she was super cool about it. She was like really excited and everything and I'm sorry I haven't been able to shout you out till now. That is because all my footage got deleted where I shouted you out before. So I'm gonna have to remake those videos. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna check out their pages, everything, I'll have it linked below. Thank you for being amazing supporters. I am nothing without you. I love you so much and I'll see you next time. Later alligators. Bye.